Hi guys, and thank you for tuning in. Who can be crazy enough to talk about hypothermia in the middle of heat wave that rumbles through Europe? Me. But there is a method in this madness, as majority of healthcare professionals associate hypothermia with either homeless people in winter or tourists exploring austere environments up in the mountains, or sometimes drowning. But actually, hypothermia can occur anywhere and anytime and quite often we, pre-hospital clinicians, can cause it. I'm going to prove it in a second. Seriously, I have a proof in this van over there. Stay with me. My name is Alex Hepner and this is Group Call. Did you know that neonatal hypothermia is a major factor in neonatal morbidity and mortality in countries of sub-Saharan Africa? This study states that the main reasons are not only low birth weight, but early bathing of babies and delayed initiation of breastfeeding and skin-to-skin -skin contact. Delayed initiation of breastfeeding and skin-to-skin -skin contact can cause hypothermia in the hottest place in the world. But why Africa? Let's think about Europe. The very recent study by Goodwin et al. describing situation in South Wales of England demonstrates that not only neonatal temperatures were recorded in only 2.7% instances, but also 72% of those temperatures were below 36.5. So again, 72% babies screened by the research team were hypothermic in England. So, uh, the low body temperature can be caused by exposure to cold, but there are numbers of intrinsic factors you should consider. What are those factors? Hypoglycemia, diabetic ketoacidosis, renal insufficiency, spinal cord injury, uh, Parkinson's disease, uh, thalamic injury like stroke, and last but not least, anorexia nervosa. Hello! Also some meds can start the hypothermia process. Phenotiazine, cyclic antidepressants, alpha blockers, beta blockers, central alpha uh, antagonists like clonidine, and so on, so on, so on. Plus, hypothermia is observed in carbon monoxide poisoning, but clinicians tend to completely forget about it. Therefore, I thought, like, you know, it's worth sharing. For more information, please go to this study. Every paramedic textbook shouts at you, cover the patient up with a blanket. But when you cover the patient, do you also cover their heads? No? Mm, shame. Uh, because your patient also does heat through the head. When you look at total heat loss, the head accounts for approximately 7%, but in rest, in normal ambient temperature. But if they are shivering, the percent of heat loss via the scalp can increase to upwards of 55%. So protecting the head is a very important part of treating the hypothermia patient. Please read those two articles uh, by Dr. Murray Hamlet. Truly fascinating bits. So, do you cover the head of your trauma patients? Where do you keep your spinal board and scoop? Inside of the truck or in the cold outside compartment? Please remember that cold spinal board can be also a source of hypothermia and I'm going to prove that in a moment. Panie Grzesiu, pan podjedzie, poproszę. We hired this refrigerated van and set it to average winter temperature in the UK. Subsequently, we left the extrication board and scoop stretcher there overnight to see what will be the temperature. Let's find out, shall we? Nine point nine minus. That's how cold your equipment can be. So what we can do about it? Well, if you cannot keep the extrication board and the scoop stretcher in the warm truck, at least cover it with a bubble wrap before placing the patient on it. It's quite a popular thing in some European countries, like Poland, and it works. Really works. This and this. And this. There are a number of studies stating that the warm fluids, preferably crystalloids to my surprise, should be administered to the trauma patients. And what do we do? We take this poor human being and we check the blood pressure. Protocols, right? And boom! We find out that the systolic blood pressure is below 90 millimeters of mercury. What do we do? 
completely ignoring the fact that hypovolemia and immobilization as such, a massive source of hypothermia, we connect fluids and happily administer X meals uh, to the patient. Did we warm the fluids up? Unlikely. In some countries, the trucks are equipped with thermobox, so the device that maintains a proper temperature of the fluids, but we don't have them here in the UK, at least in the service I work for. In the domestic environment, we can uh, warm the fluids up with, in the sink, but what can you do if you are out on the motorway? Well, you may use this device. It's a M warmer system by Mekyu. And before you will start throwing objects at me, I was not paid to review this device and the manufacturer did not try to influence me in any way. What it does is basically warms the fluid up to 37 degrees at a flow of up to 150 mils per minute. This device can be used on the patient up to 72 hours and standard recharge time is 2.5 hours. So let's see how does it work. So I have uh, fluids here, I cannulate it myself, but before I will connect myself to the device, I will spend a couple of minutes in the van to get this hypothermic uh, feeling and then we'll see does it really work. See you in a couple of minutes. temperature um, in the wall 19.7 31 minus 31 I feel like in Poland minus 19 uh, I prepared the, the set here so you can see fluids which are uh, collected uh, to the device itself. The device is connected to the powering unit, okay? And in a moment I'm going to connect it uh, to myself. I just need to leave this place because it's actually cold. So just before I will do it, uh, start ensuring, I need to uh, check the temperature of the fluids. So at the moment, 0.5. I, I think it's um, I think it's time to time to leave actually. Uh, yeah, uh, I need to start to leave. Okay, so I just left the van. I'm 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 shivering. It's it's really cold. I will connect the device to to my cannula now. Okay, so I have the fluids running, the uh, power pack is on. The, remember this device was with me in the van, minus 31 degrees uh, for a long couple of minutes. I'm shivering, I'm still shivering, uh, but you know what? I can, I can feel warmth. I, it's amazing. I can, I can feel the warmth going down my hand. It's, guys, it's, it's actually, it's actually really good. I can feel warmth. It's, it's so nice, guys. You have no idea how nice it feels after being in this cold <laughs> That's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If so, please subscribe to the channel and click like button. You can also support me by buying me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com. Uh, I'm trying to collect some money for a new sound system to my videos, so every penny counts. My name is Alex Hepner, and this was Group Call.